closer. Paul Ravel. on YouTube. I'm live right now though. Uh, from ProPhysique.com. That is my business. If you're interested in contacting me for any purpose, Paul at ProPhysique.com. Before we get too far, please subscribe if you enjoy the content of my videos. It does uh, get me excited to be near that 10,000 um, subscriber mark. I have some exciting things planned for when I reach that 10,000 mark. Things I want to do uh, for myself, for the channel, stuff like that. <clears throat> I am enjoying this process. It is uh, tough for me to take time out of my day, believe it or not, to do these videos, um, you know, but it's worth it in the end. And if we don't ever take time, we'll never have time. Uh, I want to give a special shout out this week to uh, a couple people. One would be uh, Jeremy Goldison, who is a bodybuilder I'm friends with, and uh, he mentioned that the videos were echoey, so I actually had a microphone that my sister purchased for me for my camera and I hadn't been using it <clears throat> so hopefully the audio is a little better this week I have a directional mic that I'll show you a picture of right here so thank you Jeremy for that <clears throat> and uh, I would also like to give a special shout out to Barbell Brigade so uh, as you see I'm wearing a very nice Barbell Brigade shirt first of all I'd like to thank them for making a shirt in extra large that actually fits me nicely it doesn't I'm not swimming in it <clears throat> it's always nice when you buy clothing and wear clothing that makes you feel like you actually lift. Second thing uh, in regards to Barbell Brigade is that I'm going to be visiting Barbell Brigade. So at the end of July, Lauren Conn and I are flying out to Los Angeles and we are going to go to Barbell Brigade and train. We are going to visit my friends over at Quest Nutrition and we are going to go to Gold's in Venice Beach and train. Uh, I have a client. Uh, that lives in the uh, Los Angeles area who is doing the USA Championships. So we are going to fly out to Los Angeles and then we're going to drive to Las Vegas for the USA Championships the weekend of July 28th and 29th. So we are making a making a trip out of it um, and we're going to go you know see the sights of, of Venice and uh, Gold's there and do all the things out there. I've, I've been very fortunate and I've spent a good amount of time out in Santa Monica, Venice area and I love it so I'm, I'm looking forward to being back out there and uh, you know we're going to be busy with work stuff but we're also going to try and enjoy it a little bit so if anybody here is uh, going to be around in that time let us know. It would be cool to meet up and just chat, hang out, lift, do whatever, eat. So that's the next big thing for, for me is uh, Los Angeles and Las Vegas for the USA Championships. So to the topic at hand, I made an Instagram post, I want to say it was about a week ago, um, just something simple that stated that there is no metabolic benefit to small frequent meals. And I think a lot of people, it comes down to reading comprehension. So the study I'm going to link below looked at what would happen if people ate a different frequency of meals but kept calories the same and they broke it up between 1 and 17 meals if a person ate all their calories in one meal or if they ate all their calories broken up over 17 meals what impact would it have on the thermic effect of food and metabolic rate for those that aren't familiar with the thermic effect of food, that's basically when you eat food, your body has to use energy to break it down. So there is calories burned in breaking down food. So for years there's been a theory, and it kind of makes sense when you hear the theory that, oh, well small frequent meals increases metabolic rate because it stokes the fire, it stokes the metabolism. And believe me, I actually bought into this at one point in my life too. because. Logically, it kind of makes sense. 
you know, the analogy was made like, what would you do if you had a big fire and you wanted to keep it going? Would you throw a giant log on it or would you constantly be putting smaller logs on it? The, the thought was if you put one giant log on a fire, it just puts it out. It, it can't heat it. But if you, well, guess what? Our stomachs, our digestive systems are a lot more complex than a fire. So, ends up, when they did this study, there was no difference. There was no difference in the thermic effect of food or the metabolic rate of a person who broke their meals up between 1 and 17 meals when calories were kept the same. So no, your metabolism does not speed up when you eat smaller meals. So why do people think that? Well, the first reason I think people believe that is because of the hunger change, hunger signaling. People associate hunger signaling with their metabolisms increasing. Oh, I'm really hungry today. It must be my metabolism. No. Hunger signaling is most closely related to the pattern at which you eat. People that eat intermittent fasting style in a small window throughout the day, and then after a couple days or a couple weeks, adapt to that, and they don't get hungry throughout the day. A lot of people don't eat breakfast, and because they've never eaten breakfast, they don't get hungry in the morning. This is hunger signaling adapting to the pattern that you have created. It is not hunger signaling telling you that your metabolism is slow or fast. So I think that's the biggest misconception. If you eat every three hours, you're going to be hungry every three hours. I have done this approach. I did six meals a day for months. And believe me, when you finish eating and you know you have to eat again in two and a half hours, it kind of screws up your day. You have to plan your whole day around, where am I going to be in two and a half hours? I can't be out. I can't be doing anything you know, that's going to prevent me from eating because you're starving. When I made the switch to a four meal approach, four large meals, by the way, I felt more satiated. I got hungry less frequently. And I can eat anywhere between four and six hours apart and still feel great. I'll also go to a five meal approach if my calories get so high that it's hard for me to eat that much food. I'll also at times go to a three meal approach if I sleep in on the weekends. So my main focus is the total calories for the day. And then more, you know, to be more specific, the macro ratios which I set up for myself. That is the number one goal. Now. Does that mean that small, frequent meals have no benefit? That's not what I'm saying here. I'm just saying there's no metabolic or thermic effect of food benefit. If small, frequent meals helps someone lose weight because it prevents them from snacking, it helps them stay on a schedule, it helps them feel satiated throughout the day, then I'm all for it. I'm not suggesting that small, frequent meals is a bad thing. I just don't want the message to any longer be metabolism is impacted by the frequency or the size of the meals. Metabolism is impacted by your total calorie intake over a long period of time. Metabolism does not adjust on a day-to-day -day basis uh, on any scale that we could measure. It, it, it adjusts over weeks and months and years of eating patterns. So that's what we need to be focused on. So. If you really like eating small frequent meals, if you like eating six times a day, I have no problem with it. You know, I have some clients that really prefer to be eating in a, in a, in a, in a five to six meal range because that's what they're comfortable with based on their lifestyle and schedule. I'm all for it. As long as they're hitting their daily goals, I prefer myself three to five meals per day, usually in that four range. So guys, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments below, please let me know. I linked the study below, uh, the one I talked about, that talks about uh, you know the one to 17 meals. So hopefully you can review that. And I want to get a conversation started. Uh, I don't want any negative posting. I'll delete any comments that are negative or anything like that. If you want to have a discussion, I'm all for it. Uh, just to understand, I think most of the time when we have disagreements online, it's semantics. I think we're all coming from the same place, trying to figure out things uh, and how to do things the right way. Uh, so thank you guys. I'm Paul. If you have any questions, comments below. And again, please subscribe if you enjoy the content. And uh, I've got some more good ideas for videos coming out shortly. So uh, we'll talk to you soon. 
and uh, have a great week. Thank you.